What is up, my peepholes? This is your guy, Kali, and welcome back to Budget Tubing. Now today, what I'm going to be taking a look at is the Tonor Isolation Shield and Mic Stand Kit. And what you get in this package is pretty self-explanatory. Not only do you get the Isolation Shield along with some mounting hardware, that will allow you to use pretty much any mic or mic mount with this kit, but... If I get this out of the way, you also receive a tripod style mic stand that easily breaks down into five pieces and when fully assembled is actually about my height if not a little taller when fully extended. So a lot of people of varying heights can use this without issue. I'm not exactly tiny. I'd put my height about average for men in America, if not a little bit taller, but only by an inch or two. But for the time being, let's focus on the isolation shield. Now, if I flip this over and unfold it, what you see here is a pretty nice sheet of acoustic foam. As for its dimensions, it seems to be about the size of an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. So it's not huge, but it will fit well behind your mic. And from the part that's recessed in the frame to the very tip of the cones, I want to say looks to be about two inches. At the base, we have the mounting hardware, which is threaded at three eighths of an inch, which contrary to some Amazon reviews I was seeing is a pretty standard mounting size for microphone hardware, as illustrated by the fact that pretty much every microphone accessory I've bought to date has come with one of these three eighths to five eighths adapters. And speaking of adapters, this kit even includes a three eighths to five eighths adapters, basically the opposite of what I just showed you, as shown here, which will allow you to use this isolation shield with pretty much any mic stand on the market. Also included is a little bracket and shaft which are used to allow you to attach a mic stand to the whole setup when this is attached to the mic stand. And so I can show you how that's set up. Let me move this out of the way because, well, I tried doing that a second ago and it didn't quite work. All you do is unscrew the bottom here, which Sadly, this is not a standard threading size, but I guess that helps you orient this. You then slide it here, making sure the washer is on the side with the shaft, and then attach the little bolt nut thing at the bottom, and you're good to go. I actually have a picture of this hooked up with the isolation shield and a microphone on the stand, so let me pop that up now. Now that I've shown you what this looks like set up, let's hop over to the mic test, shall we? Alright, so for this first test, I'm using the Audio-Technica AT2020 in a room that has very little acoustic treatment. Yes, I've got board games all over the place that are going to act like baffling, but I'm actually not facing those right now. I'm looking straight at a bare wall, and you can probably hear the occasional reflection. And that is what the isolation shield is here for. It's meant to reduce those, and, well, let's see if that makes a difference. All right, I've gone ahead and installed the toner isolation shield, and while I don't know if you can hear it, in my monitors, I'm definitely not hearing anywhere near as much reverb. Yes, I'm still getting the occasional reflection because this thing does not cover my entire face, but it's still doing a great job acting as a bit of a barrier between me and the bare wall in the distance. So... I'm going to say it's having an effect. I was originally planning on using this in my hallway, which is terrible on reverb, but that is like 360 degrees of ugh and no thank you. Anyway, with this test out of the way, let's hop back to the overhead shot, shall we? Now, I don't normally do things like this, but after editing the audio for this portion of the video, I just had to come back and point something out. After installing the isolation shield, I didn't just notice a reduction in the reflections, but the audio itself got warmer, and it felt more up close, not like I was in an empty room. And the thing is, I tried to maintain a uniform distance during that testing. I wasn't close enough to use the proximity effect like I am right now. And that was actually an unexpected but very welcome effect. Anyway, back to the regularly scheduled video. And that is the Tonor Isolation Shield and Mic Stand Kit. I don't know how well the sample is going to transfer to YouTube once everything's compressed, but 
when I listened back to it, there was definitely a decrease in the reflections coming from behind the mic. Mainly because this was between me and the walls that I was going to be reflecting from. Of course, this and other isolation shields are not magical background noise stoppers, so don't think this will keep your mic from picking up your mechanical keyboard with Cherry MX Blues or similar background noises, but this will improve your recording ever so slightly if you have zero acoustic treatment in your room. Just make sure you're not going to be standing right at the corner where the reflections are going to be the worst. If you're wondering about the cost of this kit, it's going to be about $70. And that makes sense, because just this isolation shield alone will set you back $40. The style of mic stand included is typically going to cost you about $30. And of course, it comes with the additional mounting hardware so you can use everything at once. I've also seen this kit sold by other companies for about $100, so there's that. And finally, I should note that as of the recording of this video, Amazon has a deal on this kit, bringing the total price down to 50 bucks. I was already going to be including the Amazon link in the description down below, but if you act quickly, you can actually save quite a bit of money on this thing. And of course, just like everything else on Amazon, it does regularly go on sale, so keep your eyes peeled. Anyway, that about covers it for this kit, so I need to get back to the pile of mics. I may or may not have found a new clone on the market that I need to review sometime soon. So, until next time, this is your guy, Cly, signing off.